Here we're going to talk about a question that you might encounter on the GED test uh, regarding undefined fractions. This is probably the most likely question you're going to get regarding um, expressions being undefined. It's going to be in fractional form. And so essentially what the question will be is something like for which value or values of x is this undefined? And it will more than likely be in the form of a fraction. And so the key to this question is to recognize that you cannot divide by zero. Um, if you have a number on top, really a number other than zero on top, you can never have zero in the denominator. So if there's a number in the numerator other than zero, you cannot have zero in the denominator. That's what it means by undefined. This fraction is undefined because zero is in the denominator. That's what undefined means in this context and is most likely what you're going to see on the GED test. So you have to remember that when you see undefined, it means that there's a zero in the denominator because you can't divide anything by zero. Remember, fractions are just divisions. It's two divided by zero. Numerator divided by denominator. And so you can't divide by zero. It just doesn't make sense. And in math, we call it undefined. So a question you might get would be something like um, 4 over, we'll say, 3 plus x. And the question is, for which value or values of x is this undefined? 4 divided by 3 plus x. So in these types of questions, forget about the numerator. For the GED test, you're really not going to have to worry about the numerator. Now, if you're in high school doing algebra, you know, algebra 1, getting to algebra 2, you might have to factor out the numerator if you can and see if you can um, cancel out some terms. That's more than likely not going to happen in the GED test, so we're not even going to talk about it. So in the GED test, forget about the numerator look at the denominator. And so all we have to do is figure out when does this equal zero? So here we just have an algebra problem. When does 3 plus x equal zero? For what values of x does it equal zero? So now we just have to solve a simple algebra problem. If you don't know how to do that, you need to watch the videos on algebra that's posted on the Facebook page. So quickly, we're gonna get, we have to get x by itself. We're going to get rid of the 3. So x, 3 minus 3 is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So when x equals negative 3, there's going to be 0 in the bottom, which obviously this is a simple example. 3 plus negative 3 is 0. So for which value of x is this undefined? It's when x equals 3. That's the answer to this question. Now they may try and um, distract you by putting something uh, more grandiose in the numerator. For example, we'll say 14x squared minus um, 2. Again, for the purposes of the GED test, ignore that. Only look at the denominator. In general, in math, I'm going to say this again, in algebra, sometimes you have to factor out the numerator, but in the GED test, the likelihood of having to do that is pretty low, so I'm just going to tell you, don't look at the, at the numerator, just again look at the denominator. When does that equal zero? So for this problem, the answer is the same. x equals negative 3. So it doesn't matter what's in the numerator. When x equals negative 3, you're going to have a zero in the denominator. Let's do another problem. If we have 4x to the fifth minus 2x minus 29 divided by 14 minus um, 2x, for which value or values of x is this undefined? Again, I'm going to tell you, forget about the numerator. When does 14 minus x minus 2x, because that's what's in the denominator, when does that equal zero? And again, we have an algebra problem. You need to know how to solve these algebra problems. If you don't, you need to watch the video. 
So I'm going to do this quickly. We're going to subtract 14 from each side to get rid of it. We're going to have negative 2x equals negative 14. We're going to divide each side by negative 2x, or negative 2, sorry. And I'll come up here. We're going to have x equals negative 14 divided by negative 2 is 7. So when x equals 7, this fraction is undefined. And that makes sense. If you plug 7 in for x, because x equals 7, you're going to get 14 minus 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 14 is 0. So you have a 0 in the denominator. That, by definition, is undefined. Again, don't worry about the numerator. So those are pretty straightforward if you know algebra. Let me show you something that if you've done factoring of polynomials, you'll see. But if you haven't, then this might be a little more challenging. How about a question like this? Two over x times x plus two in parentheses. Remember, if they're written beside each other, that means multiplication. So it's x times x plus two. Again, we don't care what's in the numerator. We just need to know when does this equal zero? So this is not a straightforward algebra problem as we've done before. You could multiply this out through the distributive property and then use the uh, quadratic equation. But there's something a little bit simpler here. You need to remember when you multiply anything by zero, you get zero, right? Five times zero is zero. A million twenty-seven times zero is zero. Anytime you multiply something by zero, you're going to get zero. So here you have a multiplication of x times x plus two. So if either one of these is zero, you're going to get zero. So either x can equal zero, because zero times anything is going to give you zero, or x plus two can equal zero. If either of these cases is, is valid, you're going to get a zero. Well, this was pretty easy because x equals zero, so there's nothing more to do. Here we have a very simple algebra problem, so x plus two minus two equals zero minus two. Here we have x equals negative two. So here we have values, two of them, x equals zero, or x equals negative two. And the way we did that is just remember, if you multiply anything by zero, you're going to get a zero. So if you take, and these are two things that we're multiplying together, x and x plus two. So if either of these are zero, equals zero, you're going to get zero. This makes sense. If x equals zero, then you're going to have zero times zero plus two is two. So zero times two, well, that equals zero. If x equals negative 2, you're going to have negative 2 times negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. So you'll have negative 2 times 0, and that also equals 0. So in these types of questions, this is a very likely candidate for what you would see. Look at the denominator. When can that equal 0? Recognize that you're multiplying two things together. So when can the first one equal 0? In this case, it's pretty easy. It's when x equals 0. When can the second one equal zero? Well, you have to do a very minor algebra problem to figure out when does x plus two equal zero, which you should probably be able to do in your head. It's when x equals negative two, then x plus two equals zero. We'll do another, one more of these types of questions. Let's say we have 18 over x plus three x minus 4. Again, we don't care about the numerator. So when does x plus 3 times x minus 4 equal 0? For what value or values of x will that be true? Well, we have two things multiplied by each other. We have x plus 3 times x minus 4. Remember when the two parentheses are sitting beside each other, that means they're multiplying them. 
So again, we remind ourselves, anytime you're multiplying by zero, something by zero, you're going to get zero. So if this equals zero, then it'll be zero times x minus four. It doesn't matter what x minus four is, you're going to get zero. Or if this one equals zero, then you're going to have zero times whatever x plus three is. It doesn't matter, and you're going to get zero. So the way that we're going to get this to equal zero is either when our first factor is zero, when x plus three equals zero, or when x minus four equals zero. When either of these are, the, are correct, we're going to get zero. Because if this equals zero, it's zero times something, so it's going to get zero. If this equals zero, then we're going to get something times zero, so we're going to get zero. So when does x plus three equals zero? Again, you can probably do that in your head, but we'll do it algebraically. Get rid of the three, x equals negative 3. So when x equals negative 3, x plus 3 equals 0, right? Because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Or x minus 4 plus 4 equals 0 plus 4. x equals 4. If x equals 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, then this equals 0. So our two answers are x minus 3 or x plus 4. So there's two answers here. 